Hi and welcome back. In the last couple of videos we've had a general introduction to HTML and in this video I want to conclude that introduction to HTML with a discussion of a very important HTML tag called div. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete actually all the content that we've added to the body section of this document. Just going to clean that out so we can start over fresh. And you can go ahead and do the same. Now, the div tag is short for division. And what a div is, is it's a division of content on your page, or it's an area of content on your page. It allows you to isolate the individual parts of your page so that they can be formatted and positioned as need be. Now, it's easiest to understand this if we actually take a look at a real life website. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up our project website here. And I want you to notice that there are several areas or several distinct pieces of content that are on this page. We have this top section right up here. And this top section really has a couple different components to it. It's got this logo over here, and it's got these social media icons over here. So here we can say we have three different divisions. We've got a top division that has within it a logo division and a social media division. Then underneath top, we have this top navigation area here. So that could say, that could be seen as another distinct area of content on our page. We then have our banner area here and our sub banner. So again that's another division and this is another division. Scrolling down a little further we have the content area here which would be a div and a sidebar area here which is another div or another division of content. And finally, we have the footer on our page. So all a div is, is a way to identify these unique sections of content on a page. Now, sometimes things are very clear and very straightforward. For example, the content area here is very distinct from the sidebar. So those are very obviously two different divisions. Could this banner area and the sub banner area be one division just with an image and then a uh, heading area down here? Answer, yes, it could be. And depending on how you develop as a designer, you'll sort of get the feel of how you like to work with divs. But generally, I like to block things out with divs at the most granular level possible. So I would have a separate div for logo and a separate div for social media inside of a top div. I would have a separate div for my banner and my sub banner here. But again, a, some of this is a matter just of personal preference. So coming back here to our project website, let's say we wanted to outline just a real simple structure for a page that has a banner a left-hand sidebar, a content area, and a footer. And you've all seen that sort of typical layout before. You would do that by doing div. And in our case, we actually had four different divisions. That banner, the left-hand sidebar, the content area, and the footer. So I would need to go ahead and repeat this four different times. And I'm just copying and pasting that in there. So that's all you would need to do to create those four different divisions. And then whatever you place inside of the div is going to be contained in that division. So let's say this was the first one is the banner div. I could type in there, 
inside of an H1 tag, welcome to my website. And then close my H1 tag. And then over here, I could have um, an H2, and this could be the sidebar content. And then this could be the content area here, where I could have a paragraph of text. And then finally, whoops, I forgot to close that P tag. And then finally, we could have the footer down here. And again, I'll close my P tag. And when we look at this in design view, you can see the way that's going to look there. Now, you may be thinking, looking at this, well, I don't really see how the divs are making anything look different. And the answer is they're not. If I was to go ahead and repeat this exact same content, only removing the divs, So there I'm taking all those divs out of this the second time and saving this. So exact same content, only difference is this is in a div and this is not. When we look at this in design view, again they look identical. So the divs in and of themselves don't actually do any formatting for you or do anything in and of themselves. All they are is dividers or divisions indicating the different sections of the content. Where they become valuable is when you place IDs on them. And the ID is simply an attribute. Where you come here and you say ID equals banner. And I could come here and say ID equals sidebar. ID equals content. And again, you're going to see that exact same format. The name equals and the value inside of quotation marks for this attribute. So by adding these IDs, again, when we look at this in design view, you see no difference. But by adding these IDs, we can go into our formatting and say, make the banner look like this. Make the sidebar look like this. Make the content area look like this. And again, going back to our example site here, if I had the top div here, I could say make the background for the top div black. I could say make the background for the top nav area this dark gray. Coming down here I could say make the width of the content area so wide, in this case it's 650 pixels, and make the, wide, the width of the sidebar so wide, in this case 250 pixels. And I could say, put so much margin space in between the two to separate them. So that name allows you, or that ID allows you to target a division of content using CSS. And again, that's going to be the crux of most of what we're doing when we're working with CSS. So it's going to be extremely important. And again, if it's a little bit fuzzy to you right now, don't worry about it because it'll be very, very obvious when we actually go into the CSS. So remember, a div allows us to identify a unique division of content. And when you add the ID attribute to a div, it allows us to give a name or an identification to an individual division 
so that we can target it for formatting with CSS or with JavaScript or whatever else you want. This just basically gives a name. And I'm hesitant to use the word name because there actually is an attribute called name that works a little differently. But this gives an identification to an individual div. There's also an element called span, an element or tag called span inside of HTML. It serves the exact same purpose as a div. The only difference is a div is a block level element and a span is an inline element. And you can see here each one of these divs forms its own line. And even if I was to remove these tags here, like h1, h2, p, so there's no longer any closer block level tags here. If I was to save this at this point, you'll still see that those form individual lines there. So a div is a block level tag, whereas a span is an inline element. And to show you the difference between that, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this in again. And the only difference is I'm going to change the word div to the word span. And now when I look at this in design view, you can see welcome to my website, sidebar content, this is the content area, this is the footer. Instead of being on separate lines, they're lined up against one another. And again, that concept of inline versus block level elements is going to be a little bit fuzzy to you right now. But don't worry about it because as we actually start putting this into practice with our project website, everything will start to become clear. But just know for right now that div and span do the exact same thing. They both create a division of content that can then be ID'd uniquely. And here I, I, I'm not doing it uniquely, but um, you, uh, I'm just showing you a contrast here. But um, they both form a unique section of content. So that's all you need to know the basics of HTML in order to create a website. Obviously there are more features inside of HTML um, that you can get into and that you can study, but for what we need to create this page, that's basically all we're going to use. The exception of that is going to be when we come here to the contact page, we're going to learn how to set this form up right here. But with the exception of that, the HTML tags that we've used so far are all that you're going to need to create a basic website like this. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and begin to apply what we've learned about HTML to, um, to our um, project website. I'll see you in the next video.